Hello again. Today we start chapter six on computer system architecture course, programming the basic computer. Topics covered in this chapter are introduction, machine language, assembly language, the assembler, program loops, programming arithmetic and logic operations, subroutines, and input output programming. A total computer system includes both hardware and software. Hardware consists of physical components and all associated equipment. Software refers to the program that are written for the computer. It's possible to write computer programs without being concerned with the details of how the computer hardware operates. It is also possible to design parts of the hardware without the knowledge of its software capabilities. Engineers concerned with computer architecture should have a knowledge of both hardware and software because the two branches influence each other. Writing a program for a computer consists of specifying directly or indirectly a sequence of machine instructions. Machine instructions inside the computer form a binary pattern, which is difficult, if not possible, for people to work with and understand. It's preferable to write programs with the more familiar symbols of the alphanumeric character set. As a consequence, there is a need for translating user-oriented symbolic programs into binary programs recognized by the hardware. A program written by the user may be machine independent or machine dependent of the computer hardware that's run the program. Most high level programming languages, such as Fortran, C, are machine independent since standard translators are used. However, the translator itself is machine dependent because it must translate the program to binary code recognized by the hardware of the particular computer used. Next instruction set. In the basic computer, we have 25 instructions. The first seven are memory reference instructions and the other 18 are register reference instructions or input output instructions. Sometimes we call them non-memory reference instructions. The first success decimal digit in register reference instructions is seven and in input output instructions is F. A memory reference instruction has three parts. The I bit, operation code, address. The I bit is used for direct indirect mode. On zero we have direct mode, and on one we have indirect mode. Operation code of size three bits used to specify the instruction and the size of the address field is 12 bits to specify the address of the operand. The first hexadecimal digit ranges from 0 to 6 in direct mode and from A to E on indirect mode. Each instruction is assigned a three-letter symbol to facilitate writing symbolic programs. For example, add, store, complement, accumulator, etc. This is the complete list of instructions in the basic computer. The first seven are memory reference instructions and 
add load store branch and conditionally branch and save return address increment and skip F0. And the register first instructions clear accumulator, clear if flip flop, complement accumulator, complement if flip flop, circulate right, circulate left, increment accumulator, skip if accumulator is positive, skip if accumulator is negative, skip if accumulator is zero, skip if E is zero, and the whole instruction. And the final group is for input, output, and interrupt. Input, output, skip if input plug is on, skip if input plug is off, turn interrupt on, turn interrupt off. We will use the instruction set of the basic computer to illustrate many of the programming techniques. Commercial computers have more instructions as we will learn in the next chapters. A program is a list of instructions or statements for directing the computer to perform a required data processing task. The computer can execute programs only when they are represented internally in binary form. Programs written in any other language must be translated to the binary representation of instructions before they can be executed by the computer. Programs written for a computer may be in one of the following categories, binary code, octal or hexadecimal code, symbolic code, high-level programming languages. First program written in binary code. The binary code, or also called the machine language code, is a sequence of instructions and operands in binary that list the exact representation of instructions as they appear in computer memory. Here is a binary code to add two numbers. The first column gives the memory of each instruction or operand. The second column lists the binary content of these locations. The main disadvantage of using binary code is that it is difficult to code and understand. However, we do not need a translator to translate the program written in machine language code. Sometimes it is convenient to write the binary code in octal or hexadecimal representation. And you know, for each four binary bits, we need one hexadecimal digit. So instead of writing 16 bits, we write only four hexadecimal digits. Octal or hexadecimal code is also considered as a machine language code. Next, symbolic code. Here the user employs symbols, letters, numerals or special characters for the operation part, the address part, and other parts of the instruction code. And this form is known as assembly language program. For our binary program to add two numbers, here we have the program with symbolic operation codes. Instead of using the binary code, we use letters such as load, add, store, etc. Each simple instruction can be translated into one binary coded instruction. And this translation is done by a special program called an assembler. Please be careful. Here we have the address of the location where the instruction is stored and here the address field, the address of the operand. And according to this program, we load the operand into the accumulator. Then we add the second operand to the contents of the accumulator. The sum is stored in one location, and this is the halt instruction. And these are the locations where the operands are stored. Next, high-level programming languages. 
These are special languages developed to reflect the procedures used in the solution of a problem rather than be concerned with the hardware behavior. The program is written in a sequence of statements in a form that people prefer to think in when solving a problem. Here, for example, is the fourth run program to add two numbers. Each statement must be translated into a sequence of binary instructions before the program can be executed in a computer. The program that translates a high-level language program to binary is called a compiler. And another classification may be used. Programming languages may be classified into low-level programming languages and high-level programming languages. In both cases, we need to translate the program into machine language. An example of low-level language is the assembly language. And example here, Fortran, C, COBOL, etc. The process of translating the program written in an assembly language into machine language is called assembling. And the process of translating a high-level language into a machine language is called compilation. The program used here is called assembler, and the program used here is called compiler. We can go one step further and replace each hexadecimal address by a symbolic address and each hexadecimal operand by a decimal operand. And this is convenient because one usually does not know exactly the numeric memory location of operands while writing a program. And by doing that, we have assembly language program to add two numbers. Here, for example, instead of remembering that the operand A is stored in location 4, we can use the symbol name A for the operand. B as well, C as well, and therefore here we have the assembly language program to add two numbers. In this program, org or origin is used to define the origin of the program, and here it is defined at location zero. The org decimal specify that the operand is in decimal and are called pseudo instructions. Next rules of the assembly language. Each line of an assembly language program is arranged in three columns called fields. The fields specify the following information. The label field, the instruction field or the operation called field, and the command field. The label field may be empty or it may specify a symbolic address. The instruction or the operation called field specify a machine instruction or a pseudo instruction such as add, store, or a pseudo code instruction end. The command field may be empty or it may include comments. It's an optional field, but if it is there, it must be preceded by a slash. And we can write any comments here. Comments are useful for explaining the program, and they are neglected by the assembler during the translation process. The instruction field may specify memory reference instruction, Register reference instruction, I.O. instruction, or pseudo instruction. In both register reference instruction and input output instructions, we have int address field. For example, increment, clear accumulator, input, output, etc. In memory reference instruction, the general form is label, 
operation code address and the letter I for direct indirect addressing for example to add directly the contents of memory location X to the accumulator we use this form and to add the contents of memory location address by Y we use the instruction in the following form this is indirect addressing mode again regarding the label field for example if we have a branch unconditionally to location L then we'll have label somewhere here followed by a comma so when this instruction is executed we branch to this instruction and we continue so the label field or the symbolic address is required if we want to refer to a specific instruction regarding the pseudo instructions a pseudo instruction is not a machine instruction but rather an instruction to the assembler giving information about some phase of the translation in assembly we use the following for pseudo instructions org n the origin pseudo instruction informs the assembler that the instruction or operand in the following line is to be placed in a memory location specified by the number next to org for example if we have the statement org 100 then our program will start at location 100 the indirective or pseudo instruction is placed at the end of the program to inform the assembler that the program is terminated the other two pseudo instructions specify the radix of the operand and tell the assembler how to convert the listed number to a binary form decimal or hexadecimal for example if we have decimal 45 x then the value stored in location x is 45 in decimal if however we uh, y hexadecimal for a then the value stored in location y is the hexadecimal value for a this is an assembly language program to subtract two numbers the org pseudocode or directive statement tells the assembler that our program starts at location 100 next load sub the value stored in memory location sub here which is minus 23 in decimal is loaded into the accumulator next the accumulator is complemented and incremented so we'll have the tooth complement of this value in the accumulator next we add the value in min which is in decimal 83 to the contents of the accumulator and this is equivalent to subtraction since we adding the value 83 to the tooth complement of the contents of the accumulator so the final result here will be 106 and this value should be stored in location diff so in location difference we have here 106 as a result of the store operation after that we encounter the halt instruction our topic on the next meeting is the assembler with its two phases first pass and second pass assembler for today, that's all. Thank you.